Brian Weatherington. Okay. Has everybody reviewed your meeting minutes that were set down? Mm -hmm. If so, if there are any changes, we need a motion to approve. Motion to approve. We'll second. All in favor? Aye. Motion to approve. Old business review. Um, I don't know that we have anybody here that can give us an old business review right now. So we're just going to skip right over that. Now I've got staff updates. Uh, no updates at this time. No updates at this time. Um, and then we'll just move to budget, pre budget presentation by town manager Joe Ibis. All right. Yours, we'll make this uh, quick. This is a presentation that we uh, gave the council. It gives a uh, uh, very high level overview of, of the budget. Um, obviously, it's something that's uh, uh, very important to everyone in the community. And uh, I'm going to go through it. I would consider this to be informal. So if someone has a question, uh, please um, just, uh, address your question whenever we're whenever popping your head. Cool. Let's talk a minute about where we were six plus years ago um, as, a, as a community, as an organization. Um, you know, we were, we actually had two departments. We had a planning department and an administration department. And since then, we've created um, and beginning to evolve into what you would see as a normal um, municipal corporation. That the, uh, um, you know, six years we had no parks. We had no parks and recreation department. We didn't even have a public works department. Um, you know, we had people um, that would volunteer to go and pick up animals off the road and stuff. So there were, you know, we weren't doing really any street repair. We weren't doing a lot of those issues. Uh, community. No community and economic development department, no street maintenance employees, and we lacked many infrastructure protocols. So we, you know, we didn't have any stormwater services. At that time, we only had eight to 10 deputies. Um, we didn't have any dedicated event staff. Um, our solid waste recycling was, yeah, I put that on there for you. Very was, was <laughs> and uh, no, no Sun Valley comments, just to give a context of entertainment options. The current fiscal year, the budget year that we're currently in, um, some of our highlights of that, what we accomplished this last year is we completed uh, Chestnut Parkway Phase 1. We opened Crooked Creek Park. We opened the Chestnut Square Park. We completed two miles of uh, Unionville IT Road sidewalk. Uh, we completed law enforcement analysis, and we completed, completed a pavement survey analysis. The budget process, we usually start actually in December um, with, some, uh, with some conversations, but um, in January we started officially, we had a strategic planning session with the council. Then you see that we had a number of uh, budget public comments where we received comments from the public on the budget. Um, we collect information from our staff. And then we propose and give the, the budget to the council. And then on May 12th, we had a budget workshop and a public hearing. On uh, May 26th, we had another public hearing on the budget. So um, in all, we've had one, two, three, four, five, six public comment sessions on the budget. Uh, we try to get as much public comment as possible. One important question that we've gotten quite often is uh, town revenues and tax revaluation. Um, every east in, in North Carolina, uh, you have to do a tax revaluation within every eight years, and it's been seven years since we've done that, and the county commissioners uh, were actually forced to do one this last year. Um, in our taxes this year, we're not recommending a property tax increase. We're going to stay at um, 18.5 cents. Um, and why are we able to do that? Mostly it's because it's the strategic growth initiatives that the community's had 
to be able to have a strong balance between commercial, industrial, and, and residential. And I'll explain that a little bit more in a minute. To come up with a revaluation number, you can to, to if, if for the long, complex formula that you put together um, at the state level, um, they have a, a formula, and you come up and you um, come up with a, an equivalent tax levy based on what your all your new reevaluations have to do. If we were to do that now, um, that essentially for dollar for dollar in property taxes, we are slightly less than where we were before. We should be at 18.83 cents, but because of the past and current council's strong fiscal management and staff, um, you know, keeping a lean organization, remember cities of Monroe have four to 500 employees, Matthews has a lot more, um, I wish I had my chart. Uh, we are probably at about um, a quarter to 20% of what most communities our size would have for staff. That allows us to be very efficient and very effective in service delivery, which allows us to maintain our, our good tax rate. That uh, we, uh, at the end of the day, um, what we've seen across, across the community is that um, land went down in value and some of, uh, some of the housing didn't necessarily do quite as well um, as, as with the values that, that it was previously. So the communities that are heavily um, um, committed to residential development, um, you see Waxhaw having to increase their taxes, um, and some of those other communities, I don't know if they've decided that, that those communities are probably um, the ones that may get the hardest with revaluation. What, what, do you know what Waxhaw is? Waxhaw? What did they increase? Uh, I, I still think they're talking about it. I think they're 37. I think they're going up three cents or something in that neighborhood. So they're 37 cents there. Yeah. So, somewhere in there. I can get that number for you. Uh, just there. Um, okay. Yes? Just, just curious, the, the, the reevaluation of property at Indian Trail, um, what, was it a section that, that dropped or was it across the board as far as? It was properties? mostly, mostly, uh, it was mostly just the land values within properties dropped a little bit. Okay. Um, but what it was was our industrial and our commercial sectors that were actually very strong that held our values. Um, housing stayed pretty much flat. So, so when you do it written, I have Andy here, and he knows this stuff better than anyone. But you have usually, if you look at your tax bill, you have a value for your land, and you have a value for your structure on your land. The structures and houses stay overall, if you look at all, it stayed fairly flat. It was the land values that went um, down a little bit. And some of our commercial industrial went up a little bit, which balanced that out. And that's why we're overall fairly flat. I think one thing that probably helped Indian Trail in particular was uh, you said the eight year span. So you had, eight years ago, you had things that were probably residential use that had been developed over the time. So you that development pushed up. Residential definitely went down. Uh, yeah. And we're not nearly as busy this tax valuation as it was last because everybody's not peeling their values going down. Right. Yeah. So so overall, the message is we have strong financial controls and we're doing very well and they're um, what's being proposed and discussed is not to have a tax increase and, and I think as a as a Community, I think we should be very happy with that. When you see Charlotte and Matthews and Pineville and Waxhaw and Monroe and potentially Union County, they're all raising taxes and we're, we're in a very strong position, which is good. year we'll get to the good stuff that in the budget we're adding uh, two additional uh, UCSO deputies and that's a recommendation we did a law enforcement analysis they recommended that we add two this year and then uh, um, a 
then we'll add a few more over the next until 2020, and then there's uh, another recommendation past that point. Um, capital improvement plan, very important. We've heard that, well, we're not investing money in, in our infrastructure. Well, the capital improvement plan that, that is in the budget has $21.4 million in it um, for public investments over the next several years. So you're, you're going to see a lot of um, improvements. Spending $1.84 million on infrastructure improvements in this cur next current year, and we'll talk more specifically on what those are. Um, we're also starting the community enhancement program, and that's something that this co committee has uh, talked at length about. Um, a lot of that it is um, starting to have a beautification and, and appearance um, efforts. Um, it's about uh, right away maintenance and beautification. Um, it's about starting a, um, a adopt a street or a place um, program to help to get some volunteers to help take care of some of our, our spaces. Um, and it's, it's just about doing a lot of the aesthetic things that, that need to be done and, and getting people focused on, on working on those issues. Um, streamlining the development process, which I'm sure is important to this committee. Um, one thing that, that we've done in the past um, is that we do everything with hard copies and we're going to make that change to going all digital um, and create a digital platform where everything is submitted digitally from plans and designs. Um, and we're going to have a database that we keep. What that stops us is that now people have to bring in like 10 copies of very thick plans, which are very cost prohibitive. People can submit, our <coughs> planners can do digital um, uh, recommendations, so there's less opportunities to go back and forth. It includes looking at some of our ordinances. There are some ordinances that need to be revised and looked at. We're, we're aware of those. Um, but it's also creating uh, a fast track um, process to where someone or a fee wants to um, process their um, development plans faster than normal. They can pay a fee to get a fast track. Sometimes they have to close on a piece of property. Sometimes they're just in a hurry. Um, sometimes uh, there's a lot of different cases. But it allows them to, to, if there's a need to get their projects out, um, it, you know, it just allows for um, um, overall sustained streamlined process. We'll be beginning to look also at all of our process from how, from when the time is plan is submitted to the time that it's approved, on how to get that through. Economic development, engineering, and planning will be working. Um, in concert with each other to come up with a new plan. Um, you know, there's some things that, that maybe don't, that maybe made sense in 2005 when our current system was put together that don't make sense right now. And so that's one of the efforts that we're going to start um, very soon to try to work on. Are those, um, like the processes, and, uh, will those be posted on, online for the public to see? I know Charlotte, um, they do a really good job of the plans coming through. And I, I know we've, we've got them up with some links, so I just want to make sure that. Yeah, all, all the plans are on, yeah. uh, available to the public. This is more, this is more of, of how, how do we cut down some of the, yeah. the, the time delays in getting things reviewed? Um, is there opportunities to, to do that faster with yeah. maybe a digital platform that more than one person can look at at a time? is that we're going to look in, and see what some of the best practices are to try yeah. to get, get stuff out the door faster. Is this in conjunction with, like, the county? Mm -hmm. So they're going to have, so they'll be involved, because I, I don't know what's going on with ours, but it take a bullet in your head after a while. It takes so long. But I think it's the county has a part, and then somebody well, else has a part. And, and that, So that, if we do our part. Yeah, and, you know, and that's a lot of the issue. And I think we get some of the blame for that is that, that we don't have control over our processes, whether it's the building um, uh, um, department, you know, we have to send that all to Union County. Um, fire department, they have to send it to Union County. Um, DOT usually, and that's I think that's what you're waiting on, is a lot of DOT stuff, mm -hmm. is that there's a lot of hands in it and we need to find a way to to make that make a little bit more sense and, and more yeah, because if I remember, we got a response fairly quickly 
from the town, mm -hmm. it's everybody else that's. So we, if, even if we fix this one, we need to fix this part, but we got to find a way of fixing the other side of it too. Mm -hmm. I don't know if we can fix it. Yeah, well, I mean, there's always a way. I'm sure yeah. someone deals with that. Um, the municipal complex and and debt management. We'll talk a little bit more specifically about those in a moment. Infrastructure improvements. Uh, we've talked about it before briefly. The Pathways of Progress initiative, something that the council started a number of years ago. This is an initiative where the town will essentially have a loop all the way around its inner core. The loop is the Chestnut Parkway. Old Monroe Road, Wesley Chapel Stouts Road, um, up to Sardis, um, no, Sardis, uh, Sardis Church Road, then Unionville Indian Trail. So, and then then it catches a part of uh, must be in the morning, um, Yance Road, and kind of comes through there and connects into the Chestnut Parkway, and that's the most difficult part of trying to figure that out over there. Our goal is to have it to be that anyone can come out of a neighborhood or a business and within um, a quarter mile, maybe half mile, that they can be on a three or four lane road being able to commute around the town and to get away from a lot of these two, two lane farm roads. Um, and if you think about, well, that sounds like it's, it's a long ways off. Well, or, you know, the Chestnut Connector um, or the Chestnut Parkway, we have Phase one done, we're starting on phase two from Gribble Road to Old Monroe Road. And then the state has already put us on their funding list starting in 2020 to get the over the railroad, this section connected. So you're talking five years that you'll be getting and having uh, that section done. Old Monroe hopefully is, is done some widen all the way through there. And, and so then you have, that's about half of it done. Um, I think probably the next major portion is working on uh, Western Chapel Stouts and trying to find a, a mechanism and, and how we can get that done. The issue with that, why, why, the question is why haven't we began on that? It's because there's a lot of development still that can happen over there. There's still a lot of green space. Um, I think that we've seen that, that there's options and what we hope to do is to have the private sector uh, work with us on, on help building out that, that section but we don't want to necessarily go too fast um, once the development comes over there. Um, again, over the next six years, $21.4 million spent on infrastructure, streets and sidewalks, traffic congestion. Um, this year, $1.84 million. So there's significant investment going on. That doesn't include, or that, well, it does include, but uh, we're also, we did a pavement street analysis for the town, which ranked all of our streets. And what the transportation committee has said is we want to do a worst first um, scenario. So the roads that are the worst are going to be fixed, and I think there's 19 or 20 of them that were in the next two years. We're going to um, resurface all those roads and bring them up to the highest standard. And and I think that that will put us in, in a very strong position as far as the our current roads. And those are mostly neighborhood roads and and you know most of the other roads in town are are, are state owned. They did a great job with Venture. That whole road just an awesome job. Here are some specific projects that we'll be working on. Repaving the lower rated local streets as we talked about. On Wednesday, there's a meeting here talking about the Sardis Unionville Road intersection. Um, we've been working in concert with NCDOT and the school over there to figure out the configuration of that. We believe that there's grant money out there because that's, that project will score fairly well, and that that project is, is we're going to bring it up to about a 50% shovel-ready condition so that we can get some grant money and maybe get that intersection done. It's long overdue. Um, Matthews Indian Trail Road intersection, same thing. We're going to start working on our designs and getting stuff ready for that. Um, and, and even if we have, because if there's opportunities in the future just to do a turn lane, the DOT, we need to have an overall design for these intersections. Same thing for the Gribble Indian Trail Road intersection. Um, the Sardis Sidewalk Project and the Rogers Sidewalk Project um, have been submitted to the state. We're waiting for those approvals. 
that's two miles of sidewalk all the way down the Rogers Road, connecting um, those six or seven neighborhoods through there to uh, the, the two elementary schools that are over there, um, Shiloh and uh, Sundale Elementary School. Um, and then Sardis is connecting um, some neighborhoods to the sidewalk project we did last year on, on the uh, Indian Trail Road Streetscape project. Again, there's some discussion on that project um, on the 3rd. It's a public meeting here uh, to get some ideas on how Indian Trail Road should be developed in the future. We are beginning phase two of Chestnut Connector and we'll also continue to be diligent on phase three, which is the bridge over the road, which that will, if, we're, if there's a way that we can move it up a couple years, that would be fantastic. And, and those are the conversations that we need to have this year. Um, some people have asked and start, talked about the Municipal Complex Community Center. Um, if you recall, this project started in June 2014. The you know, we completed the community public comment process in November. We had a, a number of open meetings and, and had a lot of good comments on the development. Right now they're working on the construction um, plans. And the town council um, selected and approved the um, construction manager at risk for the people that are getting get the bids and kind of manage the project. Um, we're starting to move forward on our loan application um, with the local government commission and we'll staff is preparing the loan documents. Um, we plan on having an early site package to the town council in late June. That means that uh, what you do is they'll do the grading, um, some of the site work, and that would probably begin sometime in July for, for the municipal complex. And then uh, said groundbreaking should be early to mid-July. And then um, we'll do the loan approval, construction contracts, and permits in July or August. It's all contingent upon um, getting all your permits and things put in line. But that's the best uh, timeline that we have at this point. Question is, how are we going to pay for it? Um, what has been discussed before is that the, the, the building of the grading of the area and doing the road infrastructure and the building um, is going to be about $8 million. What's planned is $4 million in reserves, $4 million in loan. That what we have is we have money that's put aside in our debt service capital reserve fund, which is separate from your operating capital. This we're just used for capital projects. Every year, we get $1.7 million in that fund. We do have some other bond debt. We built the parks, working on some of the streets. That we have bond debt payments of $700,000. Then, roughly, if you take the $4 million out at 15 years at approximately 4% interest, it's going to be about $355,000. So what that leaves you remaining in the capital fund, debt reserve fund, is this amount for to either pay down debt or to work on capital projects. So people ask the question, well, how are we going to pay off this $4 million? Well, it's already built into our, our payment structure, so that's why there won't be any tax increase or any necessary, because it's already built into what, what we're doing already. I will point out that right now the interest rates are coming in at about 2.5%, so 4% is probably a little high. So, um, so we feel fairly comfortable about that, that what, what you can do is we still have some bond debt for some streets and some of the old and road stuff, is that there's a pathway there that you can take care of that. There's still bond debt available for the $2.5 million that's still available to build out the rest of Crook Creek Park. All of that money you can still move forward um, without increasing taxes. So we feel very comfortable with our financial model at this point in time. Now, council could come in and completely change that, but sitting here today, um, that's, that's, that's what we're looking at. Anyone have any questions on that? Pretty straightforward.
economic development. We talked, I probably uh, talked a little bit more about this at the beginning, should have waited. New permit system, new workflow process that we talked about, fast track process, customer service training I did not mention. Um, in the budget, as this um, committee had talked about before, um, there are funds for a Chestnut, Old Monroe Road, downtown corridor plan, um, kind of a small area plan to work on and to try to figure out what the community needs to do and, and this committee and, and uh, probably the planning board will also work in conjunction on, on trying to build those plans. So, so that's in the budget as well. Implementation of the community engagement plan. We need to connect better with our community residents. We need to um, work on different ways to be able to do that. And, and we're going to, to work on that this year to, to move forward and, and run those and we're open to any ideas. Additional newsletters, increased in communication technology, business and technology parks, community enhancement, beautification, adopt a street, neighborhood enhancement program, right-of-ways, modify ordinances, and holiday decorations. Uh, we hear a lot of concerns about holiday decorations, so we do have the first days of starting to purchase some of those. Any questions I can address? This is very high. I mean, the document is 130 pages, but so this is a just a high level overview of, of what we want. Is there anything, suggestions, thoughts, clarifications? I think it's pretty cool that, that we can build a town hall without having to go out and finance the entire thing. Well, it's pretty darn cool. Here's a, here's a couple, I don't know, can we show these right mm, I don't know if we've shown the latest. The latest is wonderful. Mm -hmm. It's pretty yeah. short, a couple, a couple little more aesthetic. center room that's in there, it, uh, it will sit uh, um, 100 for sit-down dining, uh, but it's probably 200 if you wanted to get people to have chairs, um, and I don't know if it would be a much capacity. Those will be room work ones? Yeah, and we, we haven't figured out exactly how all that would work together, but, but it would be available for the community to use. And so, what are the long-term plans then for this little pot area right here? Um, we're still working on that. Okay. We're still working on that. Um, I think that, you know, the Cultural Arts Center, we have a number of um, residents over there, or residents, staff over there, mm -hmm. and that, that may look, work for expanding that, which creates more space for programming. Um, and here we can work with any of ideas. Over at the other building is that that will be converted into kind of a public works recreational um, maintenance facility, so that so that we don't have to go and build a a public works station. In there. That's that's essentially what it, what it will be. And will the law enforcement stay here, or will we? Uh, we haven't really talked about that. I mean, you know, they could come in and occupy some of this for training and mm -hmm. stuff like that. So there's a lot of good options and we have a lot of really great options. Thank you. Any more questions or any questions at all? No, that's great. Thank you. Very well. um, next, any subcommittee updates, product development, Trip and Andy? Maybe you guys were out of town for a bit. <laughs> Yeah, a newborn, huh? I was out of town last month. <laughs> <laughs> uh, not just in general product development, um, we need more. Um, and we're seeing that um, on this, this 
small space in particular. Um, the uh, industrial side, office warehousing, there's a need uh, for small space. Uh, retail side too, um, it kind of hit us um, just with you know, the real estate side plus with the sport books. I mean, there's just, there's no ready space. Everything in the area is planned. So if somebody's trying to bring a business in, um, you know, LOIs aren't even starting to go out for a lot of this stuff. So um, you're having to wait, and we're kind of missing opportunities on, on retailers and uh, on that side right now because. Uh, I know there's you know projects in Waxhaw we're looking at and, and West Chapel and just all over and there's, there's nothing <coughs> that's you know, available good space. For. Yeah, the, the, the market's just it's just really tight. I mean, I've got people looking for you know, five, ten, fifteen thousand square foot buildings, and they a lot of them want to be in this area. Um, I mean, whether that's for lease or for sale, um, it's just not it's not available right now. Yeah, I don't know. You, you may be trending towards a, a spec situation where people are going to start getting product online. Um, and it's been a long time since we haven't been in that situation. So. Um, but I mean, that's a good thing, obviously. Um, yeah. Yeah. So wanna, who's building the stuff that you guys are finding now? Like you said, somebody wants to go to Waxhaw. Is, is that like a anchor tenant builds yeah. the entire thing out? Yeah, I mean, you've got a lot of grocery anchors that are coming around doing some developments. Um, you, uh, I mean, it's your larger developers that are doing it, but they're not, uh, you know, when they're ready, um, you know, they've been talking about uh, you know, Wesley Chapel, the Target Center, expanding that phase three over there for you know, three years now. Um, uh, you've got some wax cell products, um, you know, uh, I know the public is talking about doing something down um, near Ray Road and um, but when's that coming online we don't know uh, maybe you're looking two or three years out so um, you know you've got a lot of things in the, the pipe works but there's just no supply ready so um, I don't know what you we necessarily do to speed that up but it is a need and from from the end user standpoint it's um, space is needed and it's just not there yet so it's kind of been a shift and the market, whereas a few years ago, uh, you know, rates are slashing, you know, giving away space, um, and there is no demand for development. But it's, I think it's, you know, you know, you know, on your side as well. You know, are you seeing that as well? Um, yeah, I mean, it's product very limited. Yeah. Um, you know, on the on the smaller stuff and on the on the larger side as well. Um, I think there's lots of opportunities, lots of people that want to come here, mm -hmm. um, lots of companies I think that the state on the larger projects are holding us up, I think on the smaller side, the product just isn't there. Yeah. Um, I think identifying people to do spec, if it's a possibility, there are, I mean the, the credit lines are opening up, so people are becoming more of it, there's changes over the past few years, so it's not the same. Mm -hmm. You know, financing scenario. So it's just a little bit of a new new territory. People are still trying to figure out. But yeah, I mean, residential is is you know, retail follows rooftops. Yeah, it does. And, um, yeah, I mean, it's still still building lots of houses. We definitely place. have the residential, but you know, yeah. it's it, it's interesting to me that that um, building there up in front of the uh, in front of the movie theater where they just added that wing, and that doesn't seem to be moving. Which, um, yeah. Oh, the the end cap up there. Yeah, you got you got Starbucks on one side, and, 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 and so when I keep hearing this, and I'm wondering why that doesn't just fill up. Yeah, the other side of that is yeah. I mean, like like I think that space there, um, that building, that has some access issues. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. To to get to that building, you have to be going, you know, uh, early in the morning. Westbound, <laughs> to get in. If you're not, you have to come in and you have to actually go through the backside of McDonald's to get to it. Or so it, that yeah. the building's got some issues on it. Um, they just fully leased it up. Um, oh, it is leased now. Yeah, it's fully leased. Yeah. Um, cool. And now it's uh, you know, marketing. Because that um, you know, if you're looking at areas for residential or for for something that's going to feed residential, there's a lot of nice property that's still. I mean, that whole complex. Yeah. 
And those are pad red. And uh, I think their their uh, you know, way they're thinking is you know, pre-lease it up, and then we'll build it. And that the problem is is end users right now don't want to wait. You know, they're ready. we want to come yeah, now, yeah. and we don't want to wait six to you know a year um, to get into a space. You know. So, but yeah, I mean, yeah, you're right. I mean, those are pad ready. You know. And then maybe we'll start start seeing some development there, just because of I think that I'm just seeing that kind of trend right now. Um, and usually, when a Publix comes in, they build out. Yeah, and that and see, that's that's one thing you know, I think about. You know, they you know, you'll have retail out parcels there too. You know, retail out parcels here, so um, you maybe you'll drive some competition where you know, all right, you can sit here and wait to develop, but this guy may start. And the national tenants are going to go here because it's ready sooner. So that, yeah, that thing's trending that way. So not knowing, because I'm not in your guys' business, but when you get a, something like what we just talked about, that's it's now leased out. Is that normal time frame? Uh, the, you know, it was. I think there's a lot of challenges in the market that would curtail that. Um, anyway, cause it, when they started development over there, it, uh, yeah, we we hit some rough patch for a while and slowed it up and. Um, you know, there's just other issues just with the center itself and some of those things. And, uh, you know, lease prices at the time when that came online, um, I, I, hadn't, I hadn't seen rent that high in this market. Um, and it, it blew me away. Now it's, as the market's increasing, it's, it's not looking like a bad deal anymore. But, you know, five years ago, you know, if you were trying to get $28 a foot over there, I, I said, I've never seen anything like that. And, the Union County market. And that's before your triple net. Yeah, 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 and then you know, triple net, and then and that, you're, you're looking at uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You plus, of course, you, you know, you gotta not just your rent, but you're paying all, yeah. all yeah. the insurance taxes. And, so it's uh, it was high, and uh, but I, and now I mean, you're looking now at some of the Charlotte markets, and it's coming down. I mean, you're seeing up to forty dollars a foot up there now, and it's uh, mm -hmm. I've never seen anything that high. So now this is starting to sound like well, it's so bad. Yeah. So, you know. <laughs> Funny how that works. Yeah. If, if things aren't selling or leasing, it's fundamental issues. Mm -hmm. You know, accessibility or, or price. I mean, a lot of times it's just price. Yeah. Yeah, right. Parking mm -hmm. can be an issue. Um, so yeah. I apologize. I need to need to run. Mm -hmm. um, so I'll submit a quarter plan in writing. Mm -hmm. and we have it. We so. just we just kind of started out. <laughs> yeah, no, you know, all these national retailers that, you know, people want to come in, I mean, they're, they're for the most part, all are going to have real estate committees in their corporate offices going to analyze, you know, all these products. And, um, and, and uh, for the most part, I think the Indian Trail markets, uh, you know, they're interested in. It's just, you know, you got to have something to put people into. And as far as this, this committee is concerned, I mean, what? What we really need to do is we really need to examine the map and see exactly, okay, well, where are the needs you know, or what are the needs right now and where potentially could somebody begin to develop what these needs are um, so that way we can start getting ahead of the curve. Well, I think we're probably saying the same thing. But I think it also probably helps that we have these people that want to invest in Indian Trail, is what I hear you saying. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. But we're, we're very large and we do have a decent amount of green space. And I don't think as a community we've been very clear mm -hmm. on where we want their investment to go. Right. We have all these villages all over. Where, where is the town going to invest, you know, in infrastructure and, and I think that we need to be able to put a much clearer. Yeah. Um, yeah, I could see from a, a clearer developer standpoint, uh, approaching this town from an outside and saying, "There's a lot of speculation, you know. Like, so where, you know, I'm not interested in putting, you know, my dollars here if the town is going to be shifting over here." Um, because yeah, even the Austin Village on the north side, Sun Valley. I mean, there's there's definitely areas. That, so yeah, I can tell you that. Um, so if we had like yeah, like a more of a clear.
clear plan of this is where we think you know we're going to invest. I think that probably really help. Uh, makes a lot of sense. I think that that's part of what we're trying to what we talked about yeah. is this chestnut and old Monroe corridor. Yep. Is is just make it very okay. clear. Just saying this is this is what our our hopes and desires are for yeah. these areas. Really helps. Speaking of Austin Village, uh, are you guys involved in any um, future plans? Ever? Oh, with Austin Village? Because what I'm hearing from the shop owners is that um, they're, they're asking me if there are any plans to um, to build in, in the village area itself so they have footsteps to their stores, direct footsteps, rather than um, vehicle traffic, but people actually living in that, in that area where they can walk to the shops. They've already got footsteps going on with Brookhaven and Chestnut Oak. There's a lot of people that are walking that you but see. That, Maybe that, not as much as they would like to see. Right, but they're, they're talking specifically about developing within the village. Like around developing. Harris Teeter. you got land around Harris Like, new, fa like new phases? So. Yes. Yeah. I, I haven't um, heard anything. Okay. We've, we've heard speculation that there's a couple buildings that are going to go up over there. Mm -hmm. It's really a, and you guys probably are the, in better context of that, it's really a chicken and the egg argument. Of, yeah. Um, you know, is someone going to come and build residential closer? Well, no, because it's not built out to what they need it. But then is someone going to build the retail unless there's more foot traffic? Mm. And, and hopefully the re retail is picking up enough that you can get a little bit more of synergy and energy over there, which will probably start picking up that whole area. Yeah. Does that sound right, Kelly? Because I think you've had, um, you're right about the chicken and the egg, because I believe some of the, some of the shops are working on their second and third go around as far as um, uh, store owners, you know, businesses that are making it there and those who just can't seem to make it. So I, I guess. Um, having the right footprint, but having enough footprint to sustain new shops is important. And I guess that's maybe so. We, maybe someone's looking at that model also to say, well, we've got a couple of failures here. Why? And maybe Brookhaven says, you know, I don't want to walk there every day or drive there every day for this, 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 and this. Um, I think they were thinking about um, not Baxterville, what's up, what's up north in Huntersville where the... Um, Birkdale. Birkdale. Birkdale is, 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 Birkdale is what, is what I think they're talking about building Austin Village out to be, something like that where you have the shops right, I mean the, the apartments right there. Yeah. Where, I mean, it's almost like you want milk, go right downstairs and get your milk. Um, if you if it's Saturday and you're kind of hungry, you want a sandwich when you go downstairs. You don't have to think about walking five minutes. You just go downstairs and get it. I think they're thinking something like that. Yeah, we haven't heard anything like no. quite like that. Yeah, I don't think the Baxter Village model would be. Well, I was thinking more Parkdale. Yeah. yeah. But but I think it goes to this this question that we talked about is there's so many opportunities. Mm -hmm. Where do you put it? You have Austin Village. Yeah. You have Sun Valley. You know, you have Stinson Crossing over by the yeah there. You know, where 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 are you going to invest your money? It's like yeah, it's like a, a lot of people. There's so many opportunities that are they going to sit on their money and just wait? That's right. Yeah. Until someone tells them that this is your, or we make it very clear that this is. Yeah, there's demand in Indian Trail, but I don't think there's enough knowledge and demand. Like you're saying, but if there was one, all right, we know this is where it's just going. Then you know. You, get that, that smaller pool that you might, yeah. And, and that goes to, I mean, and that's why most communities have their downtown area. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just because that's where a lot of you, you know, usually have a downtown area and then maybe kind of a box, big box thing. We have like six or seven yes, areas. Yes. <laughs> and, and at some point, I think it needs to be looked at and saying, that are we, are we, are we setting ourselves up to have a bunch of sparsely, you know, half empty commercial mm -hmm. centers? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or maybe you just you know try to define a niche on each area. You know, I mean, you know, some value amount is already kind of out there. The entertainment you know, area, and you know, maybe you know the way you look at Austin Village. When I drive through it, it, it looks higher end. Um, so maybe you try to push that kind of scale. Um, you know, just plan it so where if you are somebody coming. I like Indian Trail Market. 
where does my use fit in into this market? I think that as we start getting, if the budget gets approved, mm -hmm. um, we can start talking about some of these small area plans to really focus on yeah. some of these questions. Yeah, down there. Well, and, and with Austin Village, you're, you really are a very limited trade area right there. Mm -hmm. So your demographics, even though they're fairly strong, you're easily cannibalized by Wesley Chapel Target yeah. and Siskiyou Y area, mm -hmm. um, which are both much larger footprints, and so you truly are very much a neighborhood. Very niche, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that you know you need to realize that you know your your population, even though it may be pretty good on uh, in black and white, that you know the reality is mm -hmm. yeah, that their there. their traffic patterns may not be leading to your front door, unfortunately. So, and that is a problem too when you butt up against other towns. Yeah, you know. How, how do you work with each other so mm -hmm. that you know we're not planning something, installing our nephews or whoever is yeah, going to be there? Yeah. You know. Yeah. Another thing is, I mean, you start thinking about the center down here at this intersection, Sun Valley, Wesley Chapel, mm -hmm. Siskiyou Y area, little corner there in Stallings. I mean, it's, it's a tough market right there for yeah. us, the village. Mm -hmm. When Chestnut Park, we get stuff, doesn't end up. Close to our dead end, mm -hmm. and then it really becomes because the town hall, in my opinion, is gonna it's gonna naturally progress from there. Right? It should be at least I would think that more of the like what you were talking about apartment, you know, on top of you know something that draws people to it. Mm -hmm. If the road goes through, then it you know it eventually becomes all one. Right. It's not a twenty-five minute drive from seventy-four to. Yeah, it's it, that's you know, for the people that live there, it's one thing. For those of us who don't, it, 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 you have to work. Yeah, where you and I, yeah, where yeah. you and I are. Yeah, yeah I mean, we have to work to get there. And, <laughs> and, and you know, it really work sometimes. Yeah, you know, yeah. once that becomes up through, because mm -hmm. there's some really, you know, we've eaten there a couple of times. Mm -hmm. and there's some really cool stuff there. It's just you know, yeah, you just kind of forget about it. Well. We're we're yeah. a little too lazy to make the effort, maybe. But yeah, I do find there's the just forgotten areas of the town where I'm just like, oh yeah, that's, yeah. that's over there and that's over there. Like you feel it's connected. Yeah, just kind of. Well, and those are small businesses yeah. over there in Austin Village and their they're, they're advertising and marketing dollars are not like what other companies have. Because they, they've just got Harris Teeter there and everything else is not a national chain except for maybe one or two. You yeah. know, the veterinary's office, Poppy Seeds. Poppy Seeds is, is, poppy seeds is, is Poppy Seeds is known through Wesley Chapel and Wellington. Oh, yeah. I mean, they, they but how long have they been there and it's taken them that long? And, and there's there's just been word of mouth. They don't they don't have those dollars to throw out there to, to attract people over there. I mean, and, and so when you've got these these larger projects that are coming up and we're we're putting small business owners in there, you know, some some of them are failing because they do not know how to advertise. Or market themselves, and they're they're not they're not courageous enough to put themselves in front of other people to say, "Come visit me." Exactly. You know, they're coming from an area where the the, the the Cuban restaurant, absolutely fantastic food. They weren't open, but maybe a year at the most. Which one? I don't know the name of it right now. But you know, they they came from a small town up north that you just opened something up and everybody walked mm -hmm. to you, and they they never. Were, or had the opportunity to get people out there to get come in. They, they, they didn't have those resources available. You know, I don't know if maybe that's something Austin Village needs to work on, um, but that small town community feel is not there yet. If you've got all these great neighborhoods having their own little functions instead of going and having a parking lot function at Austin well, Village. And if you notice, a lot of these centers now, you go up to like the promenade up at 16, mm -hmm. or well, Providence Road and 485, they do free Zumba in the in the quad area, mm -hmm. in their little quad yeah. area. They do movie nights, they do music nights. That's just not, they're not just being friendly. <laughs> we would like to think they are, yeah. but it's really a way to get yeah. people in there to, it's a big marketing push for that particular center. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you know, it's 
it's not a bad idea, but it's not it's not something that the city or the town does. It's something that that particular uh, shopping center yeah. does. Now it is probably most likely reflected in their cam charges, but yep. you know, yeah. I mean, what you you pay for what you get. Exactly. Right. So you know, so I mean, you're bringing more and more people yeah, in every Saturday, every Friday night. You know, you look at Stonecrest, same thing. You know. Uh, Blake made the same thing. Mm -hmm. So, you know, they have they have a playground, you know, right there next to the restaurant water feature area up there in Blakeney. I mean, you know, like I say, you you get what you pay for. So you may be paying thirty, forty dollars mm -hmm. a square foot in rent, but you probably got a, reason why. a ton more foot traffic coming your way because that particular landlord entity mm -hmm. is is doing that much business. more to well, make increase your business yeah. coming in. So it's um it, you know, it definitely is a help me, help you scenario. <clears throat> okay, moving we'll along. I think we're covered on the town hall, maybe. Mm -hmm. Unless there's anything new. Okay. Uh, town beautification. That was sort of covered. I do have a couple questions. Go ahead. The purple um, building, Rebecca's Pottery, is that something that... I just about went off the road last week when I went by and, and right we do business here. with her. Yeah. Right Put everything purple and white polka dots on it? Uh, yeah, well, she's a tenant, remember, at the end of the day. She okay. is a tenant, so she is only responsible for her own space. Anything that happens outside of her space is the landlord or the other tenant that may be next door or something like that. So at the end of the day, it's really the landlord that should be addressed for any aesthetic thing that's going on, okay. um, on or outside of that. I was just thing. curious about that. Well, typically, well, you're asking, should it be addressed? Should it be? Yeah. I think it oh. should. Yeah. Well. Yeah. There's. I. Mean, I don't know if anybody else has noticed it, and I'm not. I'm not. I'm, I'm assuming she's doing it to market herself. Mm -hmm. Um. Which we do well, business with attention. her. It got my attention. <laughs> it got my attention. And now I'm gonna drive by and look at it. <laughs> yeah. Right. It, 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 it not a good way. She could do so many <laughs> other things to, to um, drag the eye that's going by right there to her, mm -hmm. her storefronts. So I was just curious if that is something that needs yeah. to be addressed. Is is there an ordinance in? I do not know. I am probably going to swing by and just ask her. Yeah. Well, being friendly about it. Typically, but. tenant landlord uh, leases. I'm so the landlord is the, the tenant has to give notice to the landlord if they're going to do anything to the outside because the outside typically is the landlord's responsibility. Gotcha. Typically. Uh, it's not in every case, but the majority of the cases. I was just very surprised to see it. Uh, yeah. Donna, who's the fluke? Awesome called? fluke. Awesome fluke. Yeah, she's the landlord for that particular Okay. We will look. I have not seen I guess I haven't seen it and I'll look at it and we'll get back to you if there's anything. It reminds me of, of a book from Dr. Seuss. <laughs> <laughs> okay, since Chris Plate is not here, the Monroe Bypass, is there anything on that? They're working. They are, yeah. They're, they're working. working. Yeah. Yeah. They're, they're working on it. Yeah, I, I see them tearing down houses yep. all the time. Mm -hmm. By me, anyway. <clears throat> so far, they got the go ahead. Yep. Mm. So far, there's been no injunctions. So far, so good. Yeah, we're getting, good. Uh, they've started in March, for right? Mm -hmm. so, or in between March. We're getting calls yeah, from uh, the. They were geared up and ready. To yeah, they as were. As soon as that green light dropped, yeah. They, yeah. Oh, yeah. it was no time. Yeah, we're like, getting the. Uh, pedal to the metal. Uh, calls from the property owners that have mm -hmm. gotten their DOT offers and are, are very happy to uh, look at it. So, um, <laughs> Yeah, it's going. It's moving. <laughs> and then with that, that brings us to public comments. If anybody would like to publicly comment. Uh, I would like to ask the uh, chairperson, before the meeting, did she object to being recorded? And if so, un under what grounds did she object to having a public meeting recorded? Is that a question I should answer during public comments? No. I'd be more than happy to talk to you after, sir. Anybody else? Yeah. Yes, sir? Just uh, let you know a good suggestion. You don't want this advisory committee to come across as code enforcement. I know your intentions are well and good, but you don't want to cross that line. I mean, you're trying to 
build relationships with business owners. You don't want to push them away. Mm -hmm. I did see that, what you what you uh, just spoke about, saw it well, eating breakfast at Johnny Cage yesterday. I went, oh my God. <laughs> but again, you got to be careful about the cross that line. Let the code enforcement do their job first. Okay, and let it go through the government channels. Perfect. That's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. And with mm -hmm. that, is there anything else? We have a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. Second. We're good to go. All in favor? Have a great month.
We actually uh, took care of our uh, um, move from the, the rental to another place, which is actually nicer. Right. But it's not near big enough. I mean, we got trucks. Mike, can you grab something about my stuff? But uh, yeah. Uh, Just enough? Okay. So we have Maureen Mulhall, who is the chairman of Indian Trails Economic Advisory Development uh, Economic Development Advisory Committee, and I asked her on camera whether or not she objected to a public meeting being recorded and I had witnesses and uh, during the meeting I asked her that question and under what grounds and the town manager told her that she didn't have to answer that question she then answered that uh, she would answer my questions um, after the meeting and uh, went to the bathroom and then walked out went to the car without addressing any questions so um, this is about public accountability and apparently they want this kind of meeting to be kept secret so that no one knows about it. I will interview um, a witness as to what he saw and, uh, and what he heard. Guys to tell me uh, when I asked when I walked in about the uh, camera, what did uh, Marine Mahal say? She said she was against it. And uh, what else? Uh, what else did she say? She said she had a problem with it. And would you have any reason? Uh, um, <laughs> would you have any reason to? Uh, uh, um. She shouldn't have any reason whatsoever. It's a public committee meeting. Uh, it should be by the guidelines of state statutes. And and does it look like that she was avoiding me to, to answer that question? Yes, she avoided you completely. She left the building, didn't even make eye contact with you. Thank you very much. 